thank you very much for uh, taking the time to, to listen to me first. Uh, just want to make a statement regarding uh, Zion Williamson. I know there's a lot of consternation about the fact that he did play more, and I wanted to try to make this make sense to everyone. So what happened when we got here was our performance team had a very clear plan laid out for every member of the team. And every member of the team got to go through that plan, and that plan included scrimmage minutes that many of the team got to play. Many of our players were held to 15 minutes or 12 minutes or whatever, not because there's a fixed minute number, but because there was a fixed approach to how they were going to play the game. So everybody got to do that during the course of the scrimmages. Zion didn't get that opportunity. And unfortunately, because of the situation with his family, um, he was called away and it was a very legitimate reason to leave. But unfortunately, he's 13 days removed from the group in terms of following that plan after not playing basketball for what amounts to four months. So I appreciate the fact that everybody wants him to play 40 minutes tomorrow night. I, I can promise you he's not going to. Um, no mistakes were made yesterday relative to how this was handled other than by me by not coming forward and just expressing this in the, the clearest way possible. This, this isn't complicated. Um, there's no media here next to me, so I'm gonna pull this down because it's causing me a problem. Um, it's, not, it's not complicated. So again, he will not play significant minutes in the next game, and he, he may not in the following game, quite frankly. This is all about the ramp up time. And he didn't get the benefit of any of the things that his teammates got for those 13 days. So again, this is gonna take some time, and I think it's gonna take time for him. He mentioned his flow and rhythm. It's gonna take time for him to find that. So again, I just wanted to address that specific issue right off the bat. Um, if you have other specific questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Hey Griff, this is uh, Andrew Lopez from ESPN. Hey Andrew. Is this, uh, is this solely a conditioning issue for Zion right now? Sure, and I, conditioning I suppose is a, is a word that everybody uses, but it's, it's really about the ramp up. It's, it's about what our performance team was doing from a load management standpoint for literally every member of our roster. If you go back and look at the box scores from, from those games, from those scrimmages, there was a reason people played the number of minutes they did, and he didn't get the benefit of that. And unfortunately, with the nature of this setup, with these seeding games, our schedule doesn't allow for us to play five on five in between. So the only way we can get him that simulation is during those games. And I realize it's really detrimental to actually doing what we're attempting to do, which is make the playoffs. But if we're going to have him at full strength coming through these games, he's got to go through this process. There, there is no alternative, and there wouldn't be for any other player. Right, go ahead. Hey, Scott. Okay, uh, David, Scott Kushner from the Picky How you doing, you know, man? I'm just curious. I'm doing okay. Is, I'm just curious, is there any uh, piece of this that has to do with Zion's past, with the injuries that have gone on previously, the ramp up time that he had before, or is this entirely just anybody could be going through this and, uh, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, literally. Scott, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, literally any, any player on our roster that went through exactly what he went through would be in the same protocol because they missed all of the ramp up time. This, this is nothing to do with him being unique in that way. Now, obviously the athlete that he is, the size that he is, the force and torque that he generates changes the nature of the dynamic because it's him, but it doesn't change that any player would go through this exact same protocol and the same return to play mechanism. And frankly, they have all year. It's, it's been the same return to play mechanism for everybody. What's up, Griff? This is uh, Will Guillory with The Athletic. And you mentioned uh, just the way that the format is set up, you won't be able to practice the way you could in a normal regular season. So how do you determine when it's time to ramp him up? How do you evaluate where he is compared to the previous game? If he can't go to, through the normal practice routine, you guys had him going through back in January. So we try to simulate as much of that as we possibly can on the side as well. Um, he's, he's doing a lot of extra things that other players aren't needing to do to try to condense this ramp up time uh, because he's very mindful of wanting to help the team and, and you know we appreciate that obviously and I think it's something that we're looking at in terms of all of the return to play metrics we've used all along. There's several different devices that our trainers use 
that Aaron Nelson and his staff use that tell us where a player is at their peak performance. And then there's percentages of that. And every player measures the exact same way throughout every day that we're here. And as those numbers come through, we handle players differently. And so we're going to continue to build him up as, as we would anybody else. Hey, David, it's Fletcher. Um, I wanted to ask, because Zion is such a star, and obviously the media hoopla around him is pretty intensive, is it, is it detrimental that there's so much speculation? Is it injury? Is it his past? And I guess, do you find it personally offensive if people question what you do, why, and how, because there's so much attention on him and what he does? Uh, personally offensive, no. Um, it, it makes sense to me that there's so much attention. Obviously, he's a phenom. Uh, the NBA, the league office itself, takes as much interest in this as, as the fans do. And I'm, I'm grateful, frankly, that the fans take as much interest as they do. What I'm frustrated by is that there has to be a conspiracy theory involved when literally there's not one thing different that's being done with him than was done for every player on this roster when we got here. And he missed 13 days of what those guys got. And now all of a sudden, because the stakes are raised and because unfortunately we were selected for seven national TV games, we're supposed to reinvent the wheel. And it's not fair to the kids. So I think on, on his behalf, I'm a little bit frustrated, sure. Hey Griff, Christian Clark here with Ball.com. Um, you know, I, I totally understand why you'd want to be cautious with anybody who basically didn't play ball for 13 days. I guess part of the what's confusing to me is, um, or just help me understand is, you know, he got those two practices, but it, it just didn't seem like you as a team or he did a whole lot in those two practices. Can you just help me understand why? Yeah, because the rest of the team was on a timeline that was designed to peak at the right time for the games. They were all on a timeline that he wasn't part of. So as I said, he's having to do a lot of extra work on the side. We, we can't change everybody else's workload to get him ramped up. This was all done well in advance so that we crescendo at the right time. And unfortunately, we're just trying to navigate a very difficult situation there for timing. Ordinarily, in a situation like that, you'd love to have somebody get to practice with a G League team, by way of example, or parts of your roster that weren't going to play. And we just don't have that luxury here, unfortunately. It's, it's the nature of the bubble. Hey, Griff, uh, Jeff Duncan here. Um, I'm curious, in all the evaluation you've done on background medically on Zion is there any long-term concerns with him physically is there anything you all have found that is going to be something you're all going to have to manage and maintain long term for him yeah I think it's a fair question no really in terms of injury risk it's just he's a highly unique physical specimen obviously and several of them are by the way I, I say this and people act like I'm talking about him like he's some sort of a a freak it's it's not that it's drew holiday is similarly an amazing physical specimen but what zion is is wholly and totally unique so as he grows and matures as a player and evolves physically he's he's going to change radically and so being in front of of all of that is important for us so the one thing that i would say relative to him specifically is and i've said it many times the amount of power and torque he generates is off the charts relative to any other player that we've ever tested. So it makes the things that you need to provide him so that he can compete at the highest level a little more unique. And so we're, we're learning that as we go along as well. well done.